All right, I got some tape for you today. Somebody in the comments said, hey, dude, we don't do tape anymore. This is like 1960, 1980. I said, oh, yeah, you're right, man. It just like slips off my tongue. Tape. I know we got the digital thing, and it's not tape. We call film, I guess. But I'm an older guy. I remember walking to Blockbuster with my mom. I was a big Blockbuster guy. Remember, loved my whole collection of tapes. When I did my little thing with football in college, I put my VHS tapes uh, in the player at my house, walking on a treadmill, watching Barry and Peyton and, you know, a bunch of guys that I wanted to imitate, and it was always VHS. And I remember Wayne Heisinger, he took over the Dolphins. I'm like, that's my guy, that's my blockbuster guy. Take it over my Dolphins. Tape sounds just so much better than digital or film. I actually miss the old records with the scratchy sounds and stuff. I don't know. I'm old, it appears. When I say tape, I mean film, I mean digital recordings, video recordings of players, okay? So <laughs> that was pretty funny. I appreciate that. So I got, I'm going to do Liam Eichenberg today, his film against the Bucks, and then after that, I'm going to do a little schematic study of the situation and why Eichenberg really has got the bullseye on him, and he's such a critical player for this offensive line, for this team, and for the season. Now, my wife, she's a funny person. She's a foreigner, became an American. You figure, if you look at her, she has no reason to like Little House on the Prairie. But she loves Little House on the Prairie. I used to like it as a kid. She got me back into it. The whole family were watching it. The linchpin is... He used to have the old wagons with the horses and the people on top and the stuff on and they'd pull it and they get a big spoke wheel and then the shaft from the body of the wagon would go through the, the wagon and then it'd be a hole in that shaft and they put a little pin there and it was the linchpin. And if that linchpin broke, it didn't matter how awesome the wheel was, it didn't matter how awesome the wagon was or how awesome the people were in there, the wheel was coming off and you will be in what we call in, in technical terms up the river without a paddle. And his little pin, while not the most valuable or important per se, it was the critical piece to make everything go. Now, Teron Armstead, my man Teron, he's the most critical thing. He is the guy. That's the engine. And then you got Connor and Hunt next to them. They're all the pieces adding around it. You got Jackson on the side. He's at the really the tail end of it, and I'll explain that through the schematic level. But the reality is, Eichenberg at that left guard position becomes the lynch pin. So, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to those chapters. We'll have two chapters today. Uh, we're gonna have the, the little film study I got over here, and then after that, it's gonna be a little schematic study. I would like to maybe expand on that. So, Viewers who might not understand, I'm sure plenty of you do, but if, if you don't, to understand all the complexities that are going on to it and why, somebody said some great comments in the last podcast, why week one is a critical stage of evaluation for so many things, specifically this offensive line. Before I do that, I want to give my shout out. You know what I do here? I want to give my shout out to you guys. It really means a ton. All the views, the likes, the subscribes, especially the comments. I had some great comments, and I always have great comments, but I had some really good comments from the last podcast that I'm actually going to expand into a podcast on its own because they were, they, were, they were interesting, good fodder. So I thank you. You guys are the fuel that makes this channel goes, uh, to go. And my sponsors, Ace Brad, I want to give them a shout-out too because they're like the fuel additive. The two of you keeps Curtis in the game of watching football and studying tape for a living, and I'm very, very grateful. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. I was going to put Dieter and Eichenberg together, but honestly, if you don't, haven't seen me in the past, I, you know how I feel about Dieter. It's not really relevant because... He's the emergency of the emergency uh, pull, rip cord, And if he's in, I'm just, it don't matter. So I wanted to give Eichenberg his time. Now, the, the film that I got right here is not to say he's great, he sucks, or whatever. It's, as I say, evaluations are based over time. He's in a new system. He's in a new position. 
and we have to give it some time. To me, by week one, we're going to have a full taste of what he has to offer as far as his floor. He'll develop over the season. All these guys, Jackson and Robert Jones, if he comes in, they're going to develop over the season. How much, we don't know. But we need to know the floor. So this tape that I have right now is based on his first action. He's going to get a lot more action this week against the Raiders, and that's going to be far more valuable than what we saw here. But still, we have to take what we saw with a grain of salt, but we have to actually add it to our quiver of evaluation to see what we got here. So let's take a look at the tape or film, <laughs> however you want to slice it, to see what we see. All right, this is a screenplay, and you'll get to see something here. Eichenberg, he kind of comes out, but he gets a little confused as what his assignment is. He looks backside to see the play going to the opposite end, and he kind of misses that his screenplay to his side, and he doesn't get involved in the blocks. And so yeah, it's a bad look, but it also has a good side to it. It shows that he hasn't really dialed in and nailed this playbook and his assignments to the level he needs to. And so... With that growth of him understanding the playbook, there's still room for him to grow in his confidence and hopefully in how he performs and executes his assignments. Now, there's a pass rush here, and you can see there's an inside attack and twist by the defense, and Eichenberg helps to run but gets caught up, and there's some pressure and a little hit on a quarterback. But when we take a second look at it again, you'll see there is a tendency here and what happens is the inside attack comes, and Eichenberg, he gets his knee straight and his feet too sprawl, sprawl too far apart, and he gets locked into place, and he can't rebound quick enough to get, pick up the stunt, the twist behind him. And this is something I've seen from him before. Hopefully that he'll get this fixed, but this is a tendency. Now, on this one, it's a run block, and this is another tendency that we have seen from Eichenberg that must get cleared up. And you see inside here, he gets the attack by the 225-pound linebacker and just gets lit up like a Christmas tree and driven into the running back. And this is something that cannot happen. This cannot happen. Uh, go back and take a look at it again. And you see he just, he's not getting himself set and attacking quick enough. He's beat to the punch. And you can see he just, doesn't seem to have the power. The guy, the defender gets the leverage, gets up in him, and at 310 pounds, he just doesn't seem to have the power needed to handle that inside position. But we'll see how it plays out going forward. Now on this one, it's another pass block, and you know his footwork here is pretty good, and you can see he bounces off. He's maintains his composure, but then again, you see the locked knee again. This is a tendency. It's a bad tendency because you lose your agility. It's because you're overcompensating and you can't allow that to happen because it's going to inhibit your ability to block effectively. Here's another pass block and this is decent, but you can see the, you know, again, you see the, the leg getting locked up a little bit and then you see this. This wide sprawl lock. This means he's getting dominated and he's trying to do everything he can co to compensate. Now, he managed to hold the block, and that's a good thing. He did better than everybody else. But ultimately, this is not an effective technique that's going to bring high-level consistency. Again, here, he gets blown up inside, just devastated and knocked on the ground by power. This is a bigger player. So, you know, it's a lot. doesn't look as bad as when you got a 225 guy doing it, but that's not what you want to see. Kind of got leveled there. You can see Liam struggles with power. And we don't know exactly why. You can see that he has a tendency to sprawl his feet out too far, lock his knees, and he's still in the process of getting a feel for this offense with the one play where he kind of got confused. But there were some good things in there that you could see. He, at times, his footwork was together. His hand placement was together. He was able to really maintain control. And these are signs that it could develop into a much better situation. But there are other aspects that we saw that I just mentioned 
that kind of leaves us a little bit nervous. Now, he knows everything. People, people well, don't, don't the coaches to- teach these guys? Every coach, even if you didn't like last year's coach, they're pretty much teaching the same things that this, these coaches are. Very few coaches are truly exceptional, you know? Skarnecki with the Patriots is one of these guys that was like super, super duper. These guys are being taught. They've been taught it from, from high school and college. It's remembering to do it in the heat and being consistent at it. These guys are all doing the right things a lot of the time. But that space between doing right and wrong, the, sh- the smaller it gets, the more consistent you are doing the right things is the difference. Teron Olmstead, my man, he makes mistakes too. It's just the space between those mistakes is farther and farther apart. So Eichenberg understands. It's can he apply it? Can he create the right structure in his body, in his brain, in order to facilitate the things he knows what to do? We're going to have to see. This is going to be the key. So now I want to get into the schematic aspects of it. This is why I see Eichenberg as being critical. You can see this image here. And you see if Connor has to slide to his right to help out Hunt, who's got to help out Jackson, you're going to get pretty good protection. And you're going to be able to handle those two guys if you see a four-man rush. Those orange dots are the defenders. And you get a normally a four-man rush against five blockers. Now, the problem is, to, well, first, Teron Armstead's going to have his guy like 99% of the time. And so... You, you're, if, you, if you have to help out Jackson, your right's going to be pretty much solidified against two guys. Your left is going to be solidified against one guy, but then Eichenberg is going to have to maintain his blocking alone levels at a high clip to keep this little schematic working. Now, there's a whole mess of intangibles and extras that could change the way this thing plays out. So, let's look at it conversely, all right? So, because this, this, the center, he's going to, unless there's five guys, he's going left or right. So, if Eichenberg isn't able to handle himself, now you could see this. You got Tehran, Eichenberg, and Connor to the left, and they're going to take care of their two guys. And it's going to actually end up being over-blocking because you have three on two. And Tehran's already got one. But then on the other side, you've got Hunt and Jackson one-on-one. And they're going to be able to do their business sometimes for sure. But what's the consistency level? What's the consistency level? Now, you could see this and go, oh, that's pretty basic. Right. But if, if Eichenberg can handle himself at least... This is going to bring some level of stability for the offensive calling. Problem is, on the flip side, because it's a yin and yang, the defensive coordinators are going to know, hey, Khan is always going right. And that's how you work on your stunts. And if you go back to the film, you saw how Eichenberg, he took the inside step, locked his leg because he just had to use that extra leverage to get that power, and he got caught off guard, and then the stunt came behind him, the twist. And... The Patriots are a team that loves to do this, and Belichick is going to see the weaknesses and expose them, okay? Now, at the right side, they can occasionally handle on their own, and Connor is going left and right. There's no, you know, they're not, we, they, the defensive coordinator follows tendencies. If there's an unknown level of tendencies, this is going to support us, and it's going to hinder their effort. So there's a lot of tangibles that go into this, but the very basic, because they can bring five, they can bring six, they can bring a guy and look like he's bringing in drop and bring a guy from another area. There's so many different variables, but a base look of four rushes against five guys, Connor at this stage is going right and Eichenberg is going to have to handle his job at a very high clip. Will he? 
This is going to probably be one of the biggest keys for the season because if he does with Waddle and Hill and Gasecki and they got four and you can have that blocking and you got time to throw the football, our guys are getting open. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this little study. If you want me to go into a bigger uh, schematical understanding of it, we could do that too. Maybe we'll wait till after this week to see what we got. But this is what it's all about, folks, the offensive line. And don't write a check to say these guys are going to develop or they're not going to develop. We have to wait and see. Things change with the addition of Connor and Tehran and McDaniel calling plays to cover things up and to attack. Of course, it goes the other way as well. So let's wait and see. This is the first batch of information we got next week and a little bit maybe week three, but that week one is the big week. This is Curtis saying thanks for staying to the end. Please like, comment, subscribe. Comments mean the most. Thanks for staying. Curtis saying catch you next time and go Fins. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.